Hey everyone, welcome to Robotics 2. Uh, we're still doing forward kinematics. Uh, in this problem, I'm actually not going to lay out too much of it. It's going to be fairly quick. It might actually be a challenging problem if you haven't watched any of the other videos or if you're not really familiar with forward kinematics at all. But it's also a good practice problem because since I'm making it a little bit ambiguous, you'll be able to play around with it and see how easy some of this stuff is without getting lost in a bunch of the details. So what we have here is an arm that can rotate along this spire, so it can rotate around like this, but it also has a trans... <coughs> Excuse me. Hang on, let me check something. Got to make sure that I'm saying this all right. Yeah. This is actually an axis point, so it can rotate about this point. This is all fixed. This is an axis label. But this arm right here, this extension, can actually extend going in and out, basically kind of kind of like this, so on and so forth. But uh, moving right on out. And then you have the lengths here. You have the basically the inertial axis that we're measuring everything from, set offset from the base of the arm, which is right here. And then you have the final point out here, which you could call H. We'll call it H. This is, this is point H or axis H, whatever. But we want to define the location of H with respect to U. So U, U, R, H right here. And watch my previous videos to see how this notation works. So basically, all we have to do here is get the translational distance from here to here or up to here and then add in the rotation and the extra translation. So it's actually very simple. Even though we have one, uh, two, well, two points of motion, but actually multiple places where you can put an axis. I mean, you could put an axis right here, 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 and you could put an axis right here, and then you split in between them. But when all you really have are a bunch of translations, you can combine them all into one fell swoop and get this whole arm done very quickly and get the forward kinematics done. So that's what we're going to do. So to get to Ri, which is basically going to be this point right here, we're going to go to this point from here. All you have to do is translate along x of L1 and then along y of L2 and then you go up L3 plus L4 or L2 plus L4. I have a mislabel right here. This L2 and this L2. I'll call this L2 1 and this is L2 1. Sorry. When I wrote this problem out, I used L2 twice. But it's this one plus this one, which is this value over here, moving straight up to this point. Okay, once you're at this point, you have a rotation about z that you can have. And we're basically just adjusting this up here, which doesn't really matter because whether it's rotating down here or it's rotating up here, the same amount of rotation is going to happen out here. So we don't really care about the in-between. We can be flexible with this joint even though it's placed down here in the arm. Okay, so we have a rotation about theta 1, about the z-axis, so going around this axis. And then, once we have that, we have a translation along x right here of L5, which is right here. This is the location L5. And to get to right there, and then you have a translation of L6 out to here. And even though L6 is extendable and it can change, moving back and forth along this arm, so this point moves here to there, back and forth, L6 is going to be L6, some length, whether it's shorter or longer based on the extension. That's not necessary for this problem. Then if you want to do this in a translational matrix form, UU over RH translational, one underneath. You do H trans, L1, L2, L3, L plus L4, basically the same thing because the translation is exactly the same as this vector up here. And then you do an H rho Z of theta 1. And then you could do an H trans again, but that's extra work when you should just be adding on the last translational vector, multiplying on the last translational vector to turn what would be a matrix into a vector so that it equals a vector. And I recommend watching my other videos if you don't know how that really works. But this is just another example that you can kind of play with, around with and see if you really want to. You could take these, put values in, and plug it into MATLAB. And then just add in axes at like each one of these points. Like put in an axis right here and do a translation, an axis right here, an axis right here, and expand this out into smaller steps and find out, realize that this is actually equal to all the smaller steps combined. 
and it is just quicker and easier to do. So the faster you can get from here to there is just better because it's quicker to program in later on. And actually we could almost go from here to there without including all the rest of this stuff, but that just gets kind of messy. So, and you have to make sure that certain parts are aligned to make this work. I mean, you cannot do, add up all these vectors and multiply them by a rotation about Z because it would all be around out here or something like that. So you need to get in the correct axis of Z and then you can move it around and add on another rotation. Alrighty, so that's uh, forward kinematics.